Hi there, it's Matt here, and welcome back to the podcast. Now, in our last episode, we spoke about sleep pressure and adenosine, how it makes you tired in the evening, and then after sleep has cleared that adenosine away, why you will feel enlivened and awake the following day. But sleep pressure is only one half of the sleep-wake story. There is a second force at play in the sleep-wake negotiation, as it were. It's called your circadian rhythm, or in plain speak, your 24-hour body clock. Well, <laughs> it's actually the wrong word for it. It's not a body clock, as we'll discover. It's a brain clock, as it turns out. Now, your 24-hour clock will drum out a daily and a nightly rhythm. And the tick-tock rhythm of your clock will make you feel sleepy at night and then makes you feel alert during the day. Now, although you have circadian clocks in almost every cell of your body, as I mentioned, there is a master clock that sits deep at the center of your brain. You can think of it almost like Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all. Well, here there is one clock to rule them all, and that central brain clock regulates all of the other body clocks. Now, if you were to give your circadian rhythm a personality trait, it would be labeled as a creature of habit. It never stops ticking out its rising and falling rhythm, day after day, night after night. For diurnal species that are active during the day, like us human beings, the circadian rhythm will start drumming out its loud, activating beat just before you wake up in the morning. And that drum beat just gets louder and stronger into the mid-morning hours and into the early afternoon. And this is when you will hit your peak alertness, your peak performance on several different measures that we can assess in the laboratory. We'll come back to what happens in the middle of the afternoon in just a second. But by the end of the evening, the circadian tick-tock beat begins to slow down. And as it tips into its awesome downswing, so too will drop your alertness. In other words, you're going to start feeling sleepy. And the drumbeat of your circadian rhythm keeps slowing down throughout your night of sleep and it will hit its lowest point in the middle of your sleep phase. And once it hits that low point, what we call the nadir, it will stay low for a few hours, and then the beat picks back up, and it starts to rise just before you naturally wish to wake up, should you allow yourself to wake up without an alarm clock. And then it starts all over again, rising in its loud beat to create the breath of daytime wakefulness and dropping to create the calm exhale of sleep at night. So a rising and dropping, the waking inhale, the sleeping exhale, inhale and exhale. And if you were to sort of draw out this circadian rhythm, it would look like a sinusoidal wave, like a rising mountain peak of wakefulness and then a descending restful valley of sleep. Your circadian rhythm, by the way, knows nothing about your levels of adenosine sleep pressure. And your levels of sleep pressure know nothing about your circadian rhythm. They are entirely independent. However, when you're keeping a standard sleep schedule, these two independent factors will beautifully coincide with a synchronicity that any two dance partners would be proud of, sort of Fred and Ginger, as it were, or <laughs> probably Beavis and Butthead is, is closer to uh, my style. But anyway, uh, I'm getting off track. The take-home message is this. As the weight of adenosine sleep pressure hits its peak in the evening, it should arrive on the wings of the slow downturn exhale of your circadian rhythm. And if those two things align in perfect harmony, you will be beautifully pulled down into sleep that arrives with wonderful alacrity. Then with the full clearance of adenosine the next morning and the removal of all of that sleep pressure, 
it will also arrive as the drumbeat of your circadian rhythm starts to ramp back up again. And combined, these two things will naturally eject you from sleep and they will rouse you into full natural wakefulness. And so it's a beautiful story of sort of star-crossed lovers, as it were. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's taking it a, a bit too far, but you get the sort of non-Romeo and Juliet picture here of the dance between your circadian rhythm and your sleep pressure. But wait, there's more. What about the afternoons? The sponsor of today's episode is Athletic Greens. And I know that normally means you're about to skip forward, but if you would just stay with me, I would love to explain why I pick them as a sponsor. Athletic Greens is a nutrition drink, and it's something that I've been using for the past few years. And you've probably heard about it from lots of famous people out there, many of whom I respect, and several of whom I trust with my medical and my physical health. And I use it because it provides the necessary daily vitamins, minerals, and biotics required, plus also a very healthy dose of antioxidants, which, by the way, I will soon speak about in an upcoming episode about sleep and supplements. The final reason I like Athletic Greens is because of its founder and CEO, and that is Chris Ashenden. He is a remarkable individual, and he has created the company from the ground up. He's also just a really genuine bloke who's trying to improve people's health with Athletic Greens. So if you want to go and give it a try, head over to athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker, and you will get money off your first order. Also, if you use that link, athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker, they will give you firstly a one year free supply of vitamin D. And second, they will also give you five free travel packs with your first order, as long as you use that link, which is athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker. Anyway, thanks so much for listening to this and let's get back to today's episode. A funny thing happens to your circadian rhythm beat. After the peak late morning and into the early afternoon, your circadian rhythm oddly slows down for a few hours. And I'm sure you've experienced this. It's sort of people around the meeting table after lunch at work, and all of a sudden you start to see those really ugly head drops, those sort of, you know, the jaw goes into the chest and all of a sudden the head snaps back up again. I mean, it's a dead giveaway of what's happening here. It's not that these people with their head bobs are listening to good music. Rather, they are falling prey to what we've discovered is a pre-programmed, hardwired drop in your alertness in the afternoon. And for most of us, it happens somewhere between the 1 to 4 p.m. mark. As I mentioned, it happens after lunch, but counter to popular myth, it has nothing to do with you eating lunch. I can have you skip your lunch and it will still happen. And indeed, if I were to place electrodes on your head, I could show you this reliable drop in your brain's physiological alertness that happens each and every afternoon. And what this means is that us humans may not have been designed to sleep in a single bout at night, which is what we call monophasic sleep. Rather, we may have been designed to sleep in two bouts. In other words, one longer bout at night and then a siesta-like nap in the afternoon. Now, don't worry, naps will be treated in an entirely separate episode and we'll double-click and dive deep into naps. But for now, just know that this fading of your alertness in the afternoon is nothing to necessarily be worried about. You're not to blame. It's natural. It's all part of your circadian rhythm. So that is your circadian rhythm, briefly explained, which combined with sleep pressure will accurately explain when you want to be awake and when you wish to be asleep. So why then are we all a little different in our timing? Why is it that some people will cash it out in the evening, you know, very early on and they'll be in bed, you know, by 8 or 9 p.m. in the evening? And why is it that 
other people don't wish to get into bed and fall asleep through until the wee hours of the morning. This is what we call your chronotype, and that will be the topic of the next several episodes in this podcast series. Instead, I will simply now sign off. I will say good night and thank you so much again for listening to the podcasts. And as I mentioned before in the previous episode, if there's any advice that you have for how I can be doing this better, please just say hello and drop me a message on Instagram. I am there as the handle Dr. Matt Walker, doctor with a DR. And I just want to make clear that I'm not a medical doctor and none of the content in this podcast should be considered as medical advice in any way, shape or form and nor prescriptive in any way. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next episode.